Hello! In this lesson, we are going to speak about sentence stress and discuss some techniques how we can teach sentence stress. When speaking about uh, stress within a sentence, we uh, have to remember that effective use of strong and weak emphasis in phrases in sentences help achieve correct intonation in when, when speaking English language. And so uh, you will know that why it is um, necessary to use certain words and emphasize them more than other ones uh, in order to uh, achieve to convey correct meaning of your sentence. Well, and also stress patterns of students native language when speaking English may contribute to a foreign accent and interfere in the target language. So, uh, why do we need to teach sentence stress? Reasons are many. Uh, first of all, if you place stress on the uh, wrong word, you will completely change the meaning of your statement. Like an example here, he lives in the greenhouse. If you emphasize the word house, so uh, your listener will understand that you speak about the house that painted green color. But um, your real meaning maybe was he lives in the greenhouse where the plants are grown. So you see that we have to uh, use a stress correctly within a sentence in order to emphasize a certain word and uh, to give correct meaning. Uh, and your listen listener has to uh, understand exactly what you uh, want to say. Well, and if you uh, misplace uh, stress in the sentence, you can also distort the intended meaning of the sentences. For example, in the sentence, Steve is my cousin, it depends on what you want to say when you emphasize words Steve. If you emphasize Steve is my cousin, so it means that Steve but not Michael. Uh, is your cousin. Well, but if you uh, say Steve is my cousin, it means that if you put more uh, str um, more strength, more emphasis on word cousin, so it means that you want to uh, say that uh, Steve is your uh, cousin and not your brother. You see how important it is to use uh, st stress correctly uh, according to what you want to say. Uh, so stress within a sentence should be, uh, should, uh, should be used uh, correctly. And if you give too much or equal stress to unimportant or function words, later I'm going to explain what it means, so uh, you also can distort the uh, meaning uh, of your uh, sentence. When speaking, uh, of, uh, when speaking about stress of English sentence, we have to mention a term like tonic syllable. What is tonic syllable? It's a syllable that carries the main stress in a word. And within a sentence, we have some words that carry a major stress and weaker stress. Well, a tonic syllable can change its position according to what word a speaker wants to emphasize. And um, observe these examples. I and not another person like it or I like it. You see, the sentence is the same, but it's up to you or up to speaker to uh, use stress in concrete word in order to give more important importance to certain words. Well, so by changing the tonic syllable or syllable that carries the main stress, we can emphasize different parts of sentence. Well, so when speaking about uh, stress in English sentences, we have to mention two uh, terms like content and function words. And why these content and function words uh, have to be understood? Uh, it's because uh, they carry a different function in words, in, excuse me, in sentences, and according to their function, uh, according to their role, they have to be stressed or not stressed. So let us define uh, first content words. So what are content words? They uh, words uh, it can be said that they are important words or words that have dictionary meaning. Uh, so these words refer to words that have specific meaning. As, as I have said, uh, it's, they have dictionary meaning. And they may be of different parts of speech, like nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, or question words. Well, and these words in a sentence, they have to be emphasized more, they have to be pronounced louder than words that are a code function. And now let us see what function words are. So, functions words uh, may be said that they are not important words. Uh, what it means, not important. Of course, all words are important, but function words is 
its name says uh, they have specific fun function within a sentence. They are represented by articles, conjunctions, modals, pronouns, prepositions, and auxiliary verbs. So they are less important in uh, conveying meaning in the sentence. And this functions words within a sentence should be emphasized should not be emphasized as strong as content words well and you see uh, some examples of function words actually it's a mixture of everything a mixture of articles of modals and prepositions like can it's a modal yeah across from it's a preposition well he she they are pronouns well so these words should not be uh, emphasized strongly as content words well, so uh, it's like a summary for you. Then function words are less important in the sentence and they do not care as much meaning as the content words and they are not stressed. I decided to make a, uh, it's like a summary for you to have it clear. Well, and content words are stressed when speaking. Look at the example. Edgar can play the guitar. So here we see that Edgar, it's a proper name. Yeah, it should be emphasized play it's a verb it can it should be emphasized more and the guitar guitar it's also it's a noun so it should be emphasized and can it's a modal verb and you know that models they are not emphasized and the is article also it should not be emphasized why do you know why do you need to know this it's uh, in order to sound naturally when you speak in English so you have to bear in mind that content words or important words they have to be stressed and less important or function words they should be um, spoken faster and with less emphasis and in this way you uh, will sound more naturally when speaking english well and more uh, about function and content words the words that receive the stress depends on the um, personal motive of speaker well, for example, here, when an adjective or a noun combination is used, then the noun normally receives greater stress. Uh, I said that adjectives and uh, nouns, they, are, they belong to category of content words, so they are important. But uh, when, they have, uh, when we have the sentence with these words uh, together, so combination of this adjective and uh, noun, so how we have to pronounce these words what is the rule so when we have this combination both words are content but we have to pronounce with a great greater stress in th this particular examples uh, nouns like this is a pretty dress so pretty dress both words i repeat again they are content words but word dress it's a noun should be pronounced with a stronger stress the same as the next in example well and also stress can be used to clarify the meanings uh, or to call attention to a specific word in a sentence uh, for example like word i like chocolate yeah so i put more strength in the word chocolate it means that that I want to emphasize that I like chocolate and not something else. Well, and like it's a verb, so according to rule that all content words have to be emphasized more, but in this particular example, I do not emphasize a word like, but I emphasize word chocolate. It's because I want to uh, give a specific meaning to word chocolate, that I like chocolate and not something uh, different, something else. Well, and here you have some ideas, of course, it's just a very uh, small part of uh, what you can do in your class with your students, it's just some ideas. So first is listen and repeat. So you see that in all activities, the main part is listening. So listen and repeat, it's uh, uh, by doing this, your students can establish a, co a correct pattern of pronunciation. Well, students uh, have to stress the content words. So you may present a list of words or uh, fragments of sentences, or and students have to identify which words are uh, content and emphasize them more, like sooner or later. So or is a function word, so it should not be emphasized. Next activity, listen and repeat again and give more emphasis to bold-faced words. Who lives here? James lives here. So uh, also, uh, this is our examples of um, how stress can be used according to intended meaning of a speaker. 
Well, next, listen and repeat sentences with adjective or noun combinations and stress the nouns. Next, repeat the sentences with compound nouns and stress the first element of each compound. Well, uh, these compound words uh, are within a sentence, so students have to know how to identify not words in isolation, uh, because you know that in isolation, uh, bluebird, it's a compound word and compounds always uh, take stress on the first uh, element, but how students need to use stress correctly within a sentence. So you can uh, expand the complexity of a task and uh, ask your student to use compound words but within a sentence. More teaching ideas. Uh, ask your students to write their own sentences following a concrete pattern of above exercises. Well, or make role plays or dialogue dialogues uh, using uh, adjective or noun combinations and compound words, or read the sentence or text, and uh, students uh, have to stress words correctly, and you as a teacher have to monitor and um, control the correct usage of stress within sentence or uh, underline function words within a text like here i brought just uh presented for you a small excerpt of a paragraph uh, so or some sentences and students have to identify which words are uh, function and they have to um, underline them and know that when pronounce the sentences when they say the sentences this word should not be given stronger stress well and more uh, simply, you can uh, present sentences or a paragraph or a text and ask students to classify the words in the following sentences according to content or function. Well, it is all. Thank you very much.